Well, hello and welcome, and thank you very much for joining us as part of World Sailing Steering the Course Festival, which features 10 days of club activities and events on and off the water, all to get girls involved, more girls involved in sailing and administration. The Southern Hemisphere Steering the Course Festival follows on from the Northern Hemisphere Festival, which was celebrated in May of this year. Um, it's supported by the IOC Development Fund. Steering the Course aims to introduce women and girls across the globe to the sport of sailing, as well as encouraging alternative pathways for those already within the sport, such as coaching or officiating. And we're delighted to have today two ladies that um, have a great reputation in sailing. Lisa Darmanin and um, Emma Humphreys from Australian Sailing. So let's start with you, Lisa, first of all. And I read somewhere or that you started sailing on the upper reaches of Sydney Harbour at the famous Manly 16 foot skiff club and you hated sailing, but here you are now a dual Olympian, a silver medalist. How was the transformation? How did that come about? Yeah, it was pretty scary to start with as a nine year old um, with the Manly ferry coming at you um, up in that little cove. But uh, yeah, I made a commitment to do the season with my older brother and mum said you had to finish the season. Um, and I and I think she knew that by halfway through the season, I'd figure out where the wind's coming from and um, I'd fall in love with sailing. So a bit of a rocky start, but yeah, I'm so glad that I pushed through and you know, mum, mum and dad pushed me out on that Manly Junior all those years ago. And what was the next step after the Manly Junior? We're into flying 11s? Or? Yeah, so at the Skiff Club, there's that natural progression from Manly Juniors to Flying 11s. I did the 13-foot skiffs and the 16-foot skiffs there. So um, I've really gone from a junior to a senior through that club. And then I was also sailing Hobie 16s when I was about 15 years old. And that's sort of how I got into the catamaran world. So, yeah. Well, uh, they've got a terrific uh, junior program there at Manly. I mean, I've seen and watched it as um, my... Uh, daughter sailed uh, flying 11s as well and we admired the program that uh, that Manly has always put together and had some very strong representation over the years that's for sure in all the regattas but Emma to you um, you're with Australian Sailing but um, you're also employed in what position uh, have you got you're, you're looking after the New South Wales side of things are you? So I'm the regional manager for New South Wales and the ACT so yeah I, I look after sort of the day-to-day -day delivery of all of our programs and um, courses to the whole of New South Wales and the ACT. And I've got two club services officers working underneath me. And uh, yeah, we're, we're there to assist clubs in increasing their participation and, um, and also, you know, foster good relationships with the clubs and uh, maintain good relationships with all the local and state government bodies as well. Well, your, your role in administration goes back a fair way. How did you get involved with, with the sailing side of things? I uh, started off as a volunteer in class associations and, uh, and my local club uh, probably oh, over 25 years ago now. And, um, yeah, sort of worked up from a volunteer. And then um, when a job came became available at Yachting South Australia, I started there as an admin officer and um, running youth regattas and uh, sort of worked my way up. So where's home for you? You're a Brighton girl from Melbourne or are you from Adelaide? I'm from Adelaide originally, but I'm now living on the central coast in New South Wales. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, Lisa, back to you. Um, how do we get to the Olympic Games? I mean, <laughs> it's a long path, I, I'm sure, to get from junior sailing into to the Olympics. Just talk us through that, that pathway. Yeah, it's probably a bit of a different pathway than I was expecting. I wasn't that little kid being um, dreaming of going to the Olympics, but I started sailing with my cousin Jason in the Hobie 16s back in 2007. And we went to two youth world championships together and we won gold at 2009 in Brazil. Um, and then after that, the catamarans had been kicked out of the London Olympics, um, but we had heard rumblings that there would be a mixed catamaran coming in. So it was the classic case of we were in the right place at the right time as one of the only mixed teams in the fleet. And it just was sort of one of those meant to be things. And when we when it got officially announced, we just thought, yeah, we've got to do this. Let's go try win the gold medal for Australia. So we dove into the deep end. We headed overseas. 
we've got, um, you know, beaten by Olympic medalists and that big Olympic fleet that we weren't used to and just had to work pretty hard to um, catch up in terms of that high performance racing. But luckily we had the boat handling from all that catamaran experience to get us through some of those uh, tough times. And yeah, just really, really enjoyed it and thought I'd only give it one go and then I, I couldn't resist trying to do another one. <laughs> but just getting to the NACRA that you won silver in, in Rio, um, they're a mixed crew, as you say. Has the has the skipper got to be male, or could the could the skipper be female and the crew? So it's completely open. You can decide who crews and who helms. So in Rio, um, it was probably eighty percent male helms, and I think that was just from an experience standpoint. Um, and the men probably weren't ready for the women to boss them around at the back of the boat um, because in Tokyo we saw more like a 60-40 split. So it's getting more even. Um, and I think it's fantastic. It's really good for probably the men to learn to sail with women and learn that we actually can add a lot to a campaign and add a lot to um, racing around the racetrack. Yeah. And Emma, with your role at uh, with New South Wales and ACT, I guess you get round to all the clubs. Well, probably not so much now with COVID, but in the good times, um, you get round to most of the clubs and see what their programs are like and helping them out. Yeah, exactly. That's a big part of my job is getting out, having face-to-face -face meetings with our clubs. Um, I started in April and I have been down to Batemans Bay and out to Lake Keep It and up around Lake Macquarie. But since uh, we've been under stay-at-home orders, um, meetings have been online. So I've actually still been having lots of meetings with our clubs. I just haven't been able to get to the clubs themselves. But, um, yeah, so staying in touch with clubs and, you know, making sure that I get around and meet them all is definitely part of what I do. And, um, and, I, and I love going out and looking at clubs and seeing how they run and meeting everyone. And generally, is sailing becoming more popular or are we plateaued out or is there a bit of a decline? What, what, what's the, the numbers telling you? Actually, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, but um, certainly everyone was a little bit scared last year that uh, membership would drop off. Um, but it seems that uh, participation, particularly in um, Learn to Sail, really took off and membership didn't decline at all over the last year. In fact, in, um, in a lot of cases, it's increased because people are looking for activities closer to home and wanting to get out and do something, you know, in their own area, which has been great. So I think, yeah, participation is actually on the up. And how did this steering the course um, come about? Who Was that driven by world sailing or was it by some of the countries? How, how did that all come to pass? So it's a world sailing initiative. Um, that they've uh, put in place some strategies to increase women, female participation. They've done some surveys over the last few years. And this is sort of a, a part of that to sort of celebrate and foster uh, women's sailing. So they thought they would have a, um, a, as you said before, a Northern Hemisphere Festival. And now we're having our Southern Hemisphere Festival of sailing for women um, coming up next week. And that, that's a 10-day program to, to encourage girls to get out there and get into it. So what's happening to, to encourage the, the women to get on the water in that 10-day program? So we've got, we've got over 100 um, she sales reps around Australia. And um, so they'll, they've all, we've been spending months, you know, planning what's going to happen. So a lot of clubs are actually having racing or social get-togethers or both. Uh, unfortunately, um, the states that are in lockdown, uh, everything's had to become virtual. So, uh, like, um, clubs here are having virtual breakfasts. Um, we're having a trivia night. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things, but it will all be online. And, and it sort of the culmination or the main thing is going to be a big national conference, which will be online. And, and those states that are not in lockdown, um, people are getting together at their clubs to, to watch that together. Uh, but we'll all have to watch it from home. So, uh, but we're going to have some great guest speakers. We've got um, some really exciting guest speakers. I'm not going to give everything away because I want everyone to go and see it. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a really good day. Right, terrific. And Lisa, um, so some people that are watching and women, girls that are watching, what what would be your message to to encourage them to to get into sailing? 
Yes, don't be afraid. Um, there's, it's always really overwhelming. I think the sport of sailing. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that look like they've been doing it forever, but it's really about having a go and getting out there. And it, it is such a social sport, and that's like my greatest memories of it. A kid is going to the sailing club and seeing all my friends. So I think that social aspect is fantastic that's really good for girls and also for women like that jump out on a yacht with all your friends on a beautiful afternoon and then come back and sip some wine and champagne I mean what more can you want so it really offers everything if you if you want to be an adrenaline junkie you can find the things that really um spark your interest or if you want to just cruise on the harbor and you know in, enjoy the sunset you can do that too so yeah just give it a go and um take some friends and yeah, don't be don't be afraid of all the lingo. <laughs> yeah, it can be quite complicated, that's for sure. But but Emma, are the, are the clubs they've all bought into this uh, this program to to assist you? Yeah, and I think um, a lot of our youth programs have actually made it easier and more accessible and and less scary, as Lisa's saying, for um, girls to give sailing a go. Our tackers programs and our out there sailing programs. Um, have made sailing our, our you know our participation numbers uh, are fairly even split between the genders in the younger age groups and I think those sort of introductory programs that make sailing um, a lot more fun and, and it's sort of games based learning um, has made it a lot more accessible and less scary for girls to get involved and have a go and um, start sailing and um, a lot of the clubs yeah are really on board with running you know women only events and encouraging women at all age groups. And as Lisa says, that you know, you can be an adrenaline junkie. There are women getting out there on, you know, moths and wasps and things like that. And there's also, you know, um, there's a boat for everyone so yeah. of all ages and all abilities. Yeah, we've found over the years at the junior clubs that I've been involved in that parents are a little hesitant to get in, um, to bring their kids down because they don't know anything about sailing. But we've tried to put that say, look, you can work the barbecue or you can go out in the start boat or wash the boats down. I mean, that shouldn't be a, a drawback, should it? I mean, if, if the kids show any interest at all, they should be encouraged to come along, male or female. Yeah, and, and we're also making, you know, all of those sort of officials pathways more accessible and easier for people to sort of, you know, get their toe in the water as it were. You know, our, um, our entry level programs are, are free and online now. For, um, you know, becoming a race officer and a protest committee member. So there's a lot of avenues now for parents and, and adults and people of all ages to, to get in and have a go without really having to commit too much time or money or, yeah, or, or know too much before they start. Well, Lisa, if a, if a girl wants to go sailing but doesn't want to sip champagne, she wants to go to the Olympic Games, what, how... Just talk us through that. that. That's a lot of hard yards, I would think. But I mean, a lot of people have got that ambition. They've got the dream. And I'm sure, you know, once you got into it, you got the dream and you wanted to do it. You've done it twice. Talk us through that. You know, it's a long dream. I know, but that's a long pathway. Yeah, it is a long pathway. And there's probably a lot of hard work that um, a lot of people don't see. But I think for me, that belief is the number one thing. Um, you've got to have a lot of initiative um, and resilience to get through some of those really rough training sessions um, when you don't really want to get out there. And, but we always have a saying like that could race us in anything. So, you know, when you're, you're floating around and it's raining and there's no wind, um, you've still got to persist because they'll probably race you in anything. So for me, um, it's been a bit of a balance um, between hard work and um, being really organized because there's lots of other things going on in life. I think if you're really organized, you can, um, manage a lot of things like I think education is really important and as a female sailor at the moment um, it is a really good time to be a female in sailing we are seeing pathways beyond the Olympics but there's also some great initiatives within the team to make sure that you have your education or, or career pathway on the other side so um, as a female sailor I think go hard believe in yourself do everything you can on the water but also have those other things and don't be afraid to um, have a little bit of education on the side because it does take the pressure off the sailing. Um, even though you might want to be an Olympic gold medalist, doesn't mean um, that if you study once or twice a week that that's really going to take it away from you. So I think the other thing is enjoy yourself um, because if you're not having fun, what's the point? 
it's a four year journey and you get to sail for five days out of those four years on the Olympic stage. So um, having a really good team around you um, and enjoying the journey has really been super critical to my success. Did you have any female athletes that you looked up to as an inspiration? Not specifically, but I did come become, become quite good friends with Nina Curtis. So we had to beat her and Darren Bundock to get to, to Rio. And then we just had another selection for the Sailor GP. We were up against each other and she's just a really great sailor that just loves it. And I think I've learned a lot from her because she went to London and, and we've sort of been in the same circles. And I think she's a bit of a legend um, female sailor. She's pretty brave going around the world as well. So she's probably someone that I turn to quite often for some advice. Yeah. And Emma, so how do, how do the girls get involved? Well, what's the best way now to, to get linked up to a club or for this um, steering the course? How, how do they get, do they just approach a club or is a website or? So we've got, well, we've got several websites, but the main one for, for somebody, you know, who's new to sailing and wants to work out where they can go to their, to find their local club and, maybe start getting into the learn to sail level is the discoversailing.org.au website where you can search for a, a course, you know, appropriate for your age and ability and what you're interested in, whether you want to try dinghies or killboats or windsurfers, um, that's the place to go to, to find a program near you and find your closest club or a club that suits you. Um, and for all of the she sales resources and the activities that are coming up, we've got shesales.org.au which is our, our um, female participation website. And then we've got, you know, sailing.org.au is our main Australian sailing website, which sort of has everything, all of the news and, and all of the activities and all of the clubs. And, and that's where you can find all of our other resources as well. And the contact list for the staff is on all of those websites. So you can always call your local office. And age is no barrier? Definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not sort of six to 85, I think, you know, yeah. possibly younger, possibly, probably older. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, but you, but sailing, sailing is a lifetime. It, it, it's a sport for a lifetime and um, it's a way of life for a lot of people. Yeah. You mentioned before that officials can play a part, well, they play a very big part in sailing. Um, mm. Someone doesn't feel comfortable about getting on a, on a sailing boat. They could certainly work in other capacities, couldn't they? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I think I've spent more of my time, you know, in the tower um, doing results on start boats, things like that, than actually competing on boats. Um, I've spent more time doing all those other sort of roles. And, you know, that we sailing doesn't happen if we don't have all of those um, roles at a club as well. So, yeah, whether you want to stay ashore or you want to go out on a, on a support boat, um, there are roles, you know, all around sailing that supports the racing. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lisa, is um, Paris on the agenda for the next Olympics for you? Uh, I'm still deciding, but uh -huh. right now it feels like unfinished business. So um, I think it's only three years away. So we might be able to ruffle some extra energy to go fight for the, uh, the gold medal. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. But the the NACRA is in again next year, isn't it? Next time. Yeah. Yep, yep. So it's the same boat, except they've just announced that they're going to have be able to adjust our rudder lift. So we can move our board lift to manage the height of the boat. Yep. Um, but the rudder lift, we can only change before the race. And now we'll be able to change it during the race. So that'll be something new. But other than that, it'll be pretty much the same boat. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be good. I think it will promote more foiling up wind. Um, it'll still be a small range, but uh, it should help. And yeah, I think it would be good. The Europeans sort of had a jump on us at the Olympics um, with their upwind pace. So hopefully with this new rudder thing, it sort of resets and we've got a bit of time to catch them. Yeah, good. And um, the 470 next time is mixed, isn't it? A, a mixed crew. Yeah, that's exciting. Another, another mixed class. I think that'll be really interesting because it might be a bit trickier for the female crews compared to the NACRA where you're both trapezing because it's just a single trapeze on the 470. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how that plays out. I know there's a lot of mixed teams that have been training for quite a few years now. So um, I keep asking Matt Belcher who, if he's uh, 
who he's going to team up with, but he seems to uh, think he's going to be a stay-at-home dad. Yeah, well, he's done it all, hasn't he, really? That's for sure. So, but what about, uh, we're doing this on behalf of the Cruising Yacht Club and uh, it's for everyone to join in, but, you know, Sydney Hobart, is that on your agenda, Lisa, at all? Yeah, I think I'd like to do it um, one year. I'm not sure about this year. I'm a bit tired, um, but uh, I think it would be a really cool thing to do. I love watching it every Boxing Day, but I'd love to be part of it in some capacity and I really hope that it's able to happen this year. So, yeah, watch this space. And Emma, any any thoughts in doing the race? Not planning on doing it this year. Wouldn't mind right. doing it as a double-handed entry right. one yeah. year soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, with my husband. Um, yeah, so I, I, fingers crossed it can go ahead this year. It's it's mm-hmm. looking good from the New South Wales side of things. Yeah, um, yeah I, I can't say officially, but uh, things are looking promising. Yeah, well, Tasmania is the key to all of that, obviously, the, whether we can yeah, get in and I think get so. the race finished down there. But, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Wendy Tuck, who's a well-known round-the-world sailor, she's entered the two-handed division for the Hobart. And uh, with, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, Wild Oats 10 nearly won the race overall, the all-girl crew, Stacey mm. Jackson and the girls. That was a fantastic effort. I mean, it was just a live beat them right at the end. But, you know, the second overall in that race was a fabulous achievement. And we've, we've seen a lot of girls and women sail in the race and these round-the-world races. What about a round-the-world race, Lisa? That'll be easy. <laughs> yeah, well, I actually haven't gone offshore yet, so well, I don't want to commit to anything. We'll, we'll go with the Hobart and then maybe round the world. <laughs> one step at a time. One step yeah. at a time. All right. Well, Emma, anything else uh, we can say to encourage more girls to get out there or anything you'd like to finish up with? Yeah, just don't be afraid. Just... Um... Yeah, it, it's a great sport to get involved in and um, and it can be really social. So, you know, you get, get a few friends together and, and find your local club and and go down and get into it. Yeah, great. All right, well, Lisa, thank you very much. Good luck in um, maybe getting to Paris. We'll be watching. <laughs> and, uh, you've, you've earned your well-earned rest, I think, but it's probably time to get back into sailing now and encourage some more girls to get down to that Manly Skiff Club. Yeah, I'll definitely be on the water this summer. I don't know if you'll be on a rack, on a NACRA, but it'll be definitely out there tearing around on the harbour. So I'll look out for everybody. Terrific. All right. Well, girls, young and old, get out there, help, go sailing or help at the club. We'd love to see you. And uh, so, Emma, thank you. Uh, Australian Thanks, sailing. Peter. Look, uh, Look after yourself. And Lisa, to you as well, congratulations on all your success. And uh, Let's hope we might see that gold in Paris. Who knows? So thanks, girls, and uh, enjoy your sailing. And uh, any girls that wants to get out there on the on the water or off the water, we look forward to seeing you out there. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.